I'm recording this in the middle of one of the deepest crises between Russia and NATO since the end of the Cold War. Uh, Russia has more than 100,000 soldiers on the borders to Ukraine, and Presidents Putin and Biden are about to have negotiations about a possible new security order in Europe. We could have a war any day now, or perhaps it's all going to lead to, to nothing. I don't know. Nobody knows. And this gives me a kind of dilemma because clearly this is the most pressing security issue right now, and I would like to comment on it. Um, but on the other hand, events develop so quickly and are so unpredictable that whatever I say, it's probably going to be irrelevant very quickly. So I thought I'd see if I could find something to say about it. Uh, that would be relevant regardless what happens in the coming weeks and months. Um, and I think I found something. Uh, one of the things that Russia complains about is that it, it does not feel that it is being treated as an equal by NATO. They're tired of being dictated how the security structures work and they want their voice to have equal weight. But that's not going to happen. And there's a very specific reason for that. Uh, so here is the explanation why NATO will never treat Russia as an equal. Russia has been unsatisfied with NATO for a long time. Uh, they feel that they were given promises in the 1990s that NATO would not expand eastwards and that these promises have been broken. Uh, they also feel that NATO has changed its role since the Cold War so it's not only a defensive alliance, but also an organization that conducts operations around the world. They believe that NATO in this process also bends the rules of international law when it is in their interest, and that NATO uh, does this at the expense of Russia. Uh, for example, they like to point to NATO's intervention in Kosovo in 1999. NATO did that without a mandate from the United Nations, and uh, Russia was very much against it. So from a Russian perspective, the West has changed the rules of the international system and they have bullied Russia in that process. Because NATO did all these things without listening to Russia and when Russia was against it, NATO basically just ignored it and did, did it anyways. So this is what Russian officials are talking about when they say that NATO doesn't treat Russia as an equal or that NATO isn't interested in an equal dialogue. And this talking point is popular, um, both among uh, Russian politicians and academics. And many of the demands that Russia now has for a new European security order are directly linked to this desire to be treated with equal respect. In their opinion, uh, they have tried to have a constructive dialogue with the West, uh, but NATO has ignored them and made a fool of them. Because in the end, NATO never made any compromises. NATO never abandoned an expansion because Russia didn't like it or other things like that. So we can argue about whether or not all this is true. That's the Russian perspective, right? Um, there probably were made some promises in the 1990s about NATO expansion, for example, but context is important when, when you look at, at this today. But what I want to address here is the idea that Russia is not being treated as an equal to NATO. Quite frankly, this is a mindset that misunderstands what NATO is. Like Russia is a country, but NATO is an alliance of 30 countries. And this makes it difficult to compare what it means to be equal. In the capitals of those uh, 30 NATO countries, being equal means that you are equal to the 29 other countries. So treating Russia as an equal would mean to treat Russia as number 31. Uh, but that's not what Russia means when they talk about uh, an equal dialogue. Uh, Russia does not want to be equal to, say, Poland or Romania or even Germany or France. Uh, Russia wants to be equal to all the 30 NATO countries combined. So when Russian politicians say they want to be treated as an equal by NATO, um, that basically means that they want to be much more important than all the other individual countries. Of course, what they actually mean is that they don't think the European countries really count. Um, they don't buy the idea that NATO is, is an alliance of 30 independent countries. 
In their view, the only NATO country that really matters is the United States. And all of the other countries are just America's sort of sphere of influence. Uh, so what they want is to have their own sphere of influence where they can dominate over smaller European countries because that's what they think NATO is. So the Russian leaders have a very wrong idea about what NATO is, and therefore it's pretty much impossible to ever match the demands. Like, Russian leaders think they want to be equal, but in reality they don't. Uh, they would never accept what it means to be equal or to be just another European country. Even though by all other standards uh, than military force, Russia isn't actually that special compared to so many other countries. So, so the European countries will never accept that Russia is somehow entitled to being more important than they are or, or that Russia has some divine right to dominate over other countries. So that's why NATO will never treat Russia as an equal. Because Russia doesn't want to be equal. Uh, they want to be more than that. In the coming months, we will learn how things play out in Ukraine, maybe Putin and Biden will even find some common ground in their negotiations. But one thing is for sure, uh, Russia will not achieve their goal of being treated as an equal by NATO. Because that standard of equality that they talk about is something that only exists in their own imagination. And that's sad because it means that we will end up with more confrontations over this question. And in that sense, I think the competition between Russia and the West is becoming more ideological. Uh, more and more, it seems that confrontation is driven by divergent and incompatible worldviews. And, and that is actually new because it used to be a common thing to say that uh, the difference between modern day Russia and the Soviet Union is that there isn't an ideological fight between Putin's Russia and the West like there was between communism and capitalism. But I think we are seeing some signs that this may be changing because uh, the discussion about Russia wanting to be an equal to NATO shows that there are fundamentally incompatible ideas about how the international system works or how it should work. And with that, I'll end it here. I, I hope you found it useful. Um, hopefully this is an angle to the current crisis that will have some, um, some lasting value. Uh, thank you so much for watching and uh, I will see you again next time.